Good afternoon, my renegades. Welcome back to Rogue Radio. My name is Sarah Jane, and today is a Renegade Times episode. Yes, we're going to be talking about a lot. So, um, yeah, strap in, and links will be down in the description below on how to reach me. Come and hang out. Come and say hi. I love company. And uh, so, yeah, there you go. There's the intro. Okay, well, I think it's Jill Biden's turn to be a dumbass, because uh, she says all books should be in the library. Jill Biden takes a shot at parents concerned about inappropriate uh, books in school libraries. So, First Lady Jill Biden, who got her doctoral degree in education from the University of Delaware, implicitly uh, criticized American parents who feel inappropriate books are lying on the bookshelves of the children's school libraries. Okay? Um, hang on. In recent years, many parents have stood up to school boards and denounced schools for the inclusion of books they feel teach inappropriate values to children. So, for any of you who are not aware, there are books now that are very liberal and very sexually explicit in order to teach kids how to masturbate, teach kids um, about trans uh, culture and... LGBTQ and all that stuff. They had children's books out there teaching kids how to touch themselves and be sexually aware at like five years old and even lower. And um, there have been many board meetings, school board meetings across the country with angry parents saying that, you know, we have the responsibility to teach kids about sex. The school board and the government should not, and I totally agree. So, in recent years, many parents have stood up in school boards and denounced uh, schools for the inclusion, their inclusion of books that feel um, they feel teach inappropriate values to their children. Biden was prompted by NBC's Today host uh, Chanel Jones, uh, who started by noting something that would have caused uh, nary a ripple in the past. Um, parents in politics are now weighing or politicians, I'm sorry, are weighing in on what books should be um, in our school libraries and what their kids are being taught. Where is the line, in your opinion, uh, with how much of a say parents should have when it comes to their kids learning in school? Okay, for one, that is, um, it's not a question that is preparing Biden for the answer. Um, they're not actually preparing her for what is explicitly, uh, the topic, I feel like, with that, because they say, uh, when it comes to, uh, what their kids are learning in school, like, how much of a say parents should have when it comes to what their kids are learning in school. I think parents should have a say in their child's life until they're frickin' 18 years old. The fact that... Uh, Chanel, whatever her freaking name is, just said that. It's like, okay, for one, you are setting up Jill Biden up for failure because you're not actually addressing what actually is going on because there's nothing about, like, the books and what the um, topic is in these books that the parents I know have addressed. She just vaguely spat it out for Jill to, you know, try to shape into an answer. And she goes, well, I think with the pandemic, okay, shut up. The pandemic is not a subject here, stupid. Um, Parents saw how hard teachers work and how difficult the job really is, Biden answered. And I think if they work together in their school districts and decide what they want uh, their curriculum. Like I said, Chanel really, like, vagued it, that question, so... Uh, is there a balance between this book, um, should be in the library, or this book under, is under review? Jones asked. I'm guessing that she put up two books, in in comparison, I I don't know. Um, all books should be in the library, all books, this is America, we don't ban books. What the fuck? Once again, 
we're not actually getting anything from this interview except for the fact that Jill is not even prepared for the answer because she's not getting enough detail in the freaking question. <laughs> But um, in November 2021, the mother of the Fairfax High School student in Virginia, um, hang on, uh, was prevented from entering the school's library. Stacy uh, Langton was told by Fairfax High School's acting principal, Maureen Keck, she was forbidden from entering the library, the Washington Examiner reported. Okay, prior to... Uh, being barred from the library, Luke Rosiek of the Daily Wire reported Langdon had made national news after reading aloud to the school board several books available to students that include graphic depictions of sex and pedophilia. See, this is what uh, I feel the fake news should have prepared Jill for, but of course, they didn't prepare Jill for any real detailed answer and you know what maybe that was orchestrated in order for the masses to actually accept what the hell is going on like because to anybody who watched that interview or read that read this article if the daily wire wasn't able to um you know put this out we wouldn't have been able to differentiate what the hell was going on. You understand? We see, you know, whatever her name is, Miss Jones or whatever the hell her name is, the, the interviewer interviewing Jill saying, oh, these books uh, are angering, you know, parents. Should that be a thing? Should that be a problem? And then, of course, Jill, oh, but all books should stay in the library, blah, 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 blah. And then, if you, if you're somebody that's watching this on the TV screen, you won't know what the hell's going on, and therefore, your mind always wants to try to click things together in order to find a definite answer that'll satisfy you. Oh, the, the parents don't want the kids to read books? What kind of books, Jill? What kind of books? Oh my god. Okay. As opposed to Jill, Joe Biden's laissez-faire attitude regarding books that might be inappropriate for children in March, Florida GOP Governor Ron DeSantis signed HB 1476 or 1467, um, the K-12 education bill into uh, law. The bill stated, each district school board must adopt a policy regarding an objection by a parent or resident of the county to the use of a specific instructional material, which clearly describes the process to handle all objections and provides for resolution. Um, the process must provide the parent or resident uh, the opportunity to prefer proper <laughs> Um, evidence to the district school board that any material used in a classroom uh, made available in a school library or included in a reading list contains content that is pornographic or prohibited under um, S 847.012 is not suited to student uh, needs and their ability to comprehend the material presented or is inappropriate for the uh, grade level and the age group for which the material is used. DeSantis called the bill the strongest curriculum transparency legislation in the country. So my opinion is, of course, we know that the politicians, the elites, the celebrities, people in Hollywood, they've always been victimizing children, whether that be pedophilia, prostitution, or even cannibalism in, in some forms, okay? I believe in that. I believe in a lot of things now because my eyes have been opened. I don't care if you call me crazy, all right? The reason why these types of books are in the schools right now is to be able to condition kids into thinking that a pedophile relationship between a five-year-old and a 60-year-old man is okay. That's why they want to push 
the minor attracted people uh, term instead of pedophile because they think that uh, the term pedophile is stigmatizing and it's triggering to everybody who, you know, wants to have sex with a child and victimize it and hurt it. So, therefore, in order to do that, in order to um, make child trafficking, make pedophilia, and make um, the victimization of children, molestation, rape, all of that, okay and accepted by the masses, they really have to slither in really slow like a freaking motherfucking snake and make sure that these kids are able to see these things, teaching them how to masturbate, teaching them about, um, you know, don't run away from strangers sort of thing and all this other shit. And I kid you not, there will be, at some point, a bill somewhere that is going to be pushed saying that the word pedophile should no longer be used in order to, um, you know, describe somebody who is attracted to a minor. Um, there are people out there that actually think that it's okay for a pedophile to victimize a child now. And there are people like that. There are professors that actually have that mentality and I am not for it. Fuck you guys. I have the highest passionate hatred for anybody who victimizes a child. Okay? I hate you. I hate you very much. And I swear to God, I... <laughs> Ooh, uh, okay, I need to stop. I'm getting fired up. Listen, I have the most descriptive way in my mind, how y'all should die. Really, I do. But because I love being a podcast host and in charge of my own radio show and everything like that, I'm not gonna say it because I know for a fact if this gets on YouTube and they hear the shit that I wanna say, it's gonna be taken down. So count yourself lucky, motherfuckers. I have already confessed to you guys that I've gone through something like that. I'm not going to repeat myself. There's a reason why I hate pedophiles. There's a reason why anybody who is willing to repeat the same act over and over and over and over again to hurt a child, you are not a human to me, you are demon possessed and you are not a human to me at all. Absolutely not. Fuck that. Fuck you. If you have done an act and you are doing everything that you can, to retrain your mind into believing that you are not that, that you're going to therapy, you're looking to God for your help, for everything like that. If you sinned and if you did if you did this, bro, I have more respect for you if you did it once and you're doing everything that you fucking can to be a better man or woman than I am. I, I will never have respect for a repeating pedophile. I will never have respect for that. But if you sin and you made a mistake and you recognize that, hell yeah, okay? Recover. Recover. We need more people who are able to recognize what they did was wrong and are doing everything they can in order to help themselves. But now they're trying to condition kids, which is what human trafficking actually does. They condition children into believing that this is the same behavior that every child does because once they're kidnapped and taken, they are conditioned to believe that having sex with a, uh, an adult is okay. To the point that once they are discarded, they are no longer able to function in society, which means they either go back and do prostitution once they're old enough, or they commit suicide because they've been institutionalized, basically. They have been conditioned to believe that that's the only purpose they have. And that's exactly what's going on now in the school system, which really pisses the shit out of me because, oh my god, if I was a teacher, the faculty would hate me. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next subject. I'm done. This is interesting. I'm going to read this. Ohio teachers can carry guns in classrooms. So, I am from Ohio. I've lived in Ohio all my life, um, and uh, 
I, I usually try my best not to, you know, talk about the city that I live in just because I know I talk about some very sensitive shit and I only tell, like, my very close friends who listen that are in the podcast community, like, where I, you know, live, live. But, um, this is, uh, interesting. Um, I know in Ohio, um, it is now legal for anybody to own a gun, which means if you're mentally ill, you don't have to be mentally screened anymore. <laughs> anybody can own a gun, and in, in, in the location that I am in, it is very ghetto. And I don't mean that in, like, the, the meanest way possible. I mean it in, it's real. It's, it's real. It's a real thing. Um, it is very, um, I guess I kind of live in, in a split society or in a split community where one side of, you know, where I live is very poor and very run down. Um, and then another side is very well off, um, very rich. It just depends on what area you drive to. Um, because most of the time, um, there are locations that we drive to that are very rich, very big houses, very beautiful backyards and, and stuff like that, like horses in their front yards and shit. Um, and then there's, you know, the poor side, which a lot of abandoned buildings are downtown. Um, there's a lot of homeless people, um, that lurk, I don't want to say lurk, that's terrible, that, uh, try to busk for, you know, like, um, food and everything. There's a lot of people laying on the streets, um, very poor areas. And like I said, we could be in one rich neighborhood looking at the beautiful houses and then we turn a corner and it's right there in front of our paces. There's people with cardboard signs saying, you know, I need help, I need money, I need food you know, stuff like that. So it all depends like what area we're in, but most of the time that's usually how it is. Like one second we're looking at a very rich neighborhood and then another we're seeing very run down, very dangerous areas. But uh, the thing is, is that um, I love the fact that we're able to protect ourselves but I don't believe that certain mentally ill people, especially with a criminal record, should own a gun. Because there are gangs in my area, there's, um, I'm not gonna talk about them, honestly, don't know what the names of the gangs, but there are. There's, there's gangs, and there's people that should not need a gun, that shouldn't have a gun. The suicide rates and homeless rates are through the roof where I'm at, and, um, it's not okay. It's not okay. So, um, I, I am kind of on the fence about this because there are people that, you know, are professional. They know how to handle a gun. They know what situations are needed for a gun. But then there are people that are very irresponsible that just want to shoot a gun off over and over and over again. Um, my previous home that I lived in, we had, uh, like every 4th of July, we always had somebody in the backyard firing off a gun into the air. Like, I'm just like, why? No one's threatening you. No one's, no one's doing anything to you. You just decide to fire a gun off into the air and we don't know where that bullet's gonna fall, you know? But this is why I believe that my city should not, like some people in my city should be screened. Like the background, and their mental health because there's a lot, there's a lot going on in my city that doesn't need to be going on. And part of it, part of because of why like anybody can own a gun, like anybody, anybody here can own a gun now. Um, that, that's part of the problem, but it's also part of the solution is kind of like a catch 22 sort of thing where there are very responsible people, but then there's very irresponsible people that, that just want to be angry and be irresponsible and everything like that. But, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, an Ohio law uh, teachers, no, an Ohio law allowing teachers um, to carry guns in the classroom is now in effect. Which, to be honest, I love that. 
I love the fact that teachers are now able to defend themselves. I love that. I'm just saying, like, the state of my city, outside of the school system, that's where we're at. But if it's a teacher able to carry a gun, that's amazing. Um, because school shootings is a problem. But House Bill 99, the legislation that permits teachers and staff to carry firearms on campus after 24 hours of training and eight annual training hours, um, hang on, uh, was signed in June and now it became a law on Monday. Uh, my office worked with General Assembly to uh, remove hundreds of hours of curriculum irrelevant to school safety and to ensure training requirements and were specific to a school environment and contained significant scenario-based training. Um, Ohio Republican Government Governor Mike DeWine Mike DeWine is uh, just disgusting. I don't like him. Just saying. Uh, he said in June a statement regarding to the law signing. Uh, House Bill 99 accomplishes these goals, and I thank the General Assembly for passing this bill to protect Ohio children and teachers. <laughs> he added, did he actually say that? <laughs> this is the same guy that wanted to legalize vaccination cards for any type of workplace in my city, or in the whole state. Like, no, I don't believe that's him. You're just doing it to make him look good. Uh, local school boards retain retain the authority to determine whether teachers in their dist district can possess a firearm in school campuses. Uh, despite the new law designed to increase school safety, several school districts across the state um, quickly responded by banning the practice on their campuses. Akron Public School um, and Beechwood County Schools were uh, among those opposed to the new law. Therefore, I stand united in calling for common sense solutions to keep schools safe and opposing arming uh, school staff, the Akron Public School Board announced. We support the board's resolution and policy um, changes amid or aimed at, <laughs> at keeping our schools safe by refusing to use the option that is new law offers, or that this new law offers. I cannot read. Give me a sec. By doing so, we are keeping our focus on providing the highest uh, equality or quality education uh, to all of our scholars. Okay. The Cleveland Municipal School Board voted to oppose the new law. Uh, Cincinnati area schools have also announced that they will not be allowing armed teachers. Okay, um, despite the school districts that have opted out, the legislation seeks to offer more options for local um, schools to protect students, teachers, and staff following a rise in school shootings. Several, I'm sorry, several uh, school safety reforms have been proposed nationwide following a mass shooting um, in Uvalde, Texas and uh, killed, that killed 19 students and two teachers um, in May at Robb Elementary School. Uh, in Ohio, the legislation follows a tragic 2016 shooting during which a 14-year-old student opened fire um, on a fellow student in the school cafeteria. Wait, in Ohio legislation? Ooh. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. No, it happened in Cincinnati, not in my city. But, yeah. Crazy. Okay. This can't be fucking real. This can't be real. But then again, we're in a world today that that wants pedophiles to be part of the LGBTQ+. You know, I'm not surprised. But this one hurts. Like, this one pisses me off. 
a sex traffic teen who killed her alleged rapist sentenced and fined. Why? Such backward fucking politics. <sighs> now you guys know why I cuss so much on my podcast. I hate doing it. It's a terrible habit. I'm really sorry if it offends you. It's just, oh, I can't. I can't not. When something like triggers me like this, oh, it makes me sick. <clears throat> anyway, um, a sex trafficking victim who killed her alleged rapist was sentenced Tuesday in Iowa, um, in an Iowa court, to five years supervised probation. 1,200 hours of community service and was ordered to pay 150000 in restitution to the family of the alleged rapist. Oh my god. Uh, Piper Lewis, who is now 17, um, killed 37-year-old Zachary Brooks in Des Moines, Iowa on June 2020 when she was, a when she was 15 years old. After Brooks allegedly raped her numerous times, the teen stabbed the man more than 30 times, according to authorities. While Miss Lewis was the second... Okay, well, Miss Lewis, this was the second um, chance you asked for, Polk County District Judge David M. Porter. Fuck you, M. Porter, you nasty motherfucker. Um, said Tuesday... You don't get a third. Do you understand that? What do you mean? Do you... you does, has she killed other rapists before? I mean, does she have a criminal record? I need to know this. I'm asking the right questions. Daily Wire, where the hell are you? Judge Porter also said that uh, the court was presented with no other option than, the force, or than to force the teen to pay restitution to Brooks's family at thanks to Iowa law. Okay, so if she's been trafficked, the trafficker has a lot of money, therefore, if the family is in it, they can pay a lot of money towards the judge to have it uh, swayed their way. And uh, Money talks, people. Uh, um, but I need to know, like, a second chance? for where, where, What was the first chance? What, what was the second chance? What was the third chance? Like, if she doesn't get a third chance, but what are those two other chances that you did give her? Like, is she an actual murderer? Like, I, I need to know this. Family thanks to Iowa law. Okay. Uh, the state also does not have a safe harbor law, the Associated Press noted. Um, the teen pleaded to involuntary ma manslaughter and willful willful injury, both of which were uh, punishable up to 10 years behind bars, Fox News noted. Uh, Judge Porter deferred the prison sentences. Um, if the teen violates her probation, she could serve up to 20 years. Um, Lewis was adopted out of a foster care age, um, let's see, at age three by Billy and Leslie Lewis. Uh, she reportedly struggled to run away from home um, on three occasions. Okay, see, I've talked about the foster care system and how corrupt it is. A lot of the time when, uh, you know, sex trafficking, someone who is sex trafficked, it's usually by somebody they know. And the parents could possibly have been the ones that trafficked her. I don't know why. I mean, you're already getting a lot of foster checks, right? For this child? I, I don't know. But um, before she ended up with Brooks, she was taken by a musician, 28, who was not named and, was, and has not been charged with a crime. The man whom Lewis um, considered her boyfriend uh, allegedly sex trafficking the minor to Brooks. Police and uh, prosecutors have not uh, dis disputed the Lu that Lewis was sexually assaulted. So the prosecutors did not dispute that. That was not a topic in the courtroom. They just decided to arrest her because she killed somebody. That That's how they wanted it to be seen by everybody else. Um, was sexually assaulted and sex trafficked uh, through prosecutors. 
though, uh, though prosecutors in said Lewis uh, killed Brooks while he was sleeping and therefore not an immediate threat, the AP reported. So apparently, okay, this is what, okay, let me just tell you a little story real quick, okay? My stepfather always told me, because he taught me self-defense, uh, great respect to him. I really, I, I love him. Um, he taught me self-defense, and he told me, if you are ever in danger, if you are ever in a domestic violence dispute, if you are ever, like, if you have an abusive, like, boyfriend, or somebody around you is abusive that is hitting you, wait till they're sleeping, break their knees with a baseball bat if there's one near you or with something heavy. That way they cannot get to you. They can't walk. They can't get to you. Therefore, you are able to call the police and say, listen, this person's been beating me. He can't walk. <laughs> Everything else. But that's what my stepdad told me a long time ago, and I still believe it to this day. Like, um, if someone is domestically hurting you physically, um, wait till they're sleeping and break their knees. That way they cannot actually get to you to hurt you. Um, that way you have enough time to call the police. I mean, my stepdad has always, like, uh, thought strategically about certain things, because, I don't know, I, he's just a badass sometimes, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> but that's what he taught me, you know. But, um, <laughs> so that's what I was always taught as a kid. So the fact that she's getting prosecuted because he was not an immediate threat to her, it doesn't erase the fact that he actually raped her multiple times. I mean, tell me, what, what are you trying to advocate for? Okay. We always hear women's rights need to be advocated for, believe the victim, make sure that the victim is, you know, believable and, and all of this stuff. But the minute she's actually trying to defend herself, in order for all that cruelty to end, she ends up getting the punishment. But, okay, I don't see anything wrong with that. Because... Technically, this man kidnapped her, sex trafficked her, and raped her multiple times. But of course, that guy can't be prosecuted because he's dead. Therefore, they needed to punish somebody, right? They had to punish the victim. I took a person's life, Lewis said in court. My intentions that day were not to uh, just go out and take somebody's life. In my mind, I felt that I wasn't safe and I felt that I was in danger which resulted in these acts, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the crime was committed. So even in that quote, she does show remorse that she even had to do something like that. Um, she acted in self-defense, in my opinion. Um, the teen hopes to become a juvenile justice advocate. Go, girl, do it. Do it. Go fucking do it. Because the criminal, the criminal justice system in Des Moines is fucked up. <laughs> my story can change things, Lewis said. Uh, my story has changed me. The events that took place on that horrific day cannot be changed as much as I wish it could. Um, that day, uh, a combination, or that day, a combination of complicated actions took place resulting in, um, the death of a person as well as stolen innocence from a child. So yeah, there's the politics. Um, okay, now we're gonna go into something that I've been kind of wanting to uh, read, so let's go into enter. T what is this? Enter. T I can I can never find a section for this, like the middle section of my podcast. I don't have a name for it. You know what? We're just gonna say I don't have a name for it. Segment. Let's go. Hello, my renegades. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. 
Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and computer. And when hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download your Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's a lot of fun, so come join us. Okay, I found this very interesting and fascinating, um, in my opinion, when I read about it in an article, and then I ended up finding it again, and now I'm going to read it to you guys. So, um, humans generate an oxidation field, and it changes the air chemistry around us. That, that's pretty cool. So we're going to read this. There are all kinds of pollutants in the air around us, outdoors can be washed away through, and I hate pop-ups, give me a minute, can be washed away through falling rain and the oxidation that happens after ultraviolet light from the sun reacts with ozone and water vapor. So what happens indoors? Um, As a a study shows, uh, there's also some oxidation going on indoors too. The chemical cleaning that occurs via these hydroxyl radicals Uh, short-lived reactive species whose job is to oxidize other molecules happens through a combination of ozone leaking in a form or in form or in from the outside excuse me and from the oxidation fields that we create around ourselves so in some scenarios levels of OH radicals indoors are comparable to daytime indoor levels Um, scientists have found Okay. In other words, we're walking, breathing chemical reaction machines. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Which um, has implications for indoor air quality and human health. Okay. The discovery, as we, or that we humans are not only a source of reactive chemicals, but um, are also able to transform these chemicals ourselves. Um, was by surprising, was very surprising to us, says atmospheric te- chemist Nora Zanani. What the ju- what just jumped towards me? What the hell? I swear to God, that better not have been a spider. Um, from the Institute of Atmospheric Sciences and Climate in Italy. I'm gonna pretend that um, nothing jumped. I'm, just, I'm, I'm ignoring it. I'm ignoring it. The team carried out experiments with three separate groups for of four people in uh, a special climate controlled chamber with levels of ozone that matched the upper end of what you might typically find indoors. uh, Records (laughs) were made of OH values both with out ozone present and before uh, and after humans entered the room. Uh, Through a combination of computational the fuck? Why do they gotta give us big words like this? Computational fluid dynamics uh, modeling and actual air measurements. Um, It became clear that OH levels are present, abundant, and forming around human beings. Uh, That sounds like a superpower. You You can, like, change the air quality around you, bro. That's amazing. Um, the scientists found that our personal oxidation fields are generated as ozone uh, reacts to the oils and fats in our skin, um, particularly in the unsaturated titropyrene squalane. Jesus, compound that. Oh, Lord. That makes up about 10% of the lipids and can protect the skin and keep it supple. Um, the strength and shape of the oxidation field um, is determined by how much ozone is present where it infiltrates and how the ventilation of the indoor space is configured. It's thought that we spend about 90% of our time indoors and these findings have um, important implications for making sure that uh, time is spent breathing air um, and that that it's clean and that it's healthy for us as possible. So, something we're all now acutely aware of thanks to the pandemic. Shut up about the pandemic, it's over! Shut up! Damn. Okay. 
while we always know that oxidation uh, processes were uh, happening indoors, it seems that in some conditions the reactions generated by humans are dominant ones. It's important to understand these processes with, in both in isolation and relation to the indoor chemicals that might arise from building materials, furnishings, and scented products because reactions could produce respiratory irritants as well as removing pollutants. Do you guys remember um, the episode of me like ranting about Biden's speech and then I'd just go on on a story that I found uh, that I told you guys that I found a truck just spewing like bug spray into the air around my complex. Well, it turns out that that chemical is actually uh, damaging to the respiratory system. <laughs> I'm just like, so you're really trying to poison the air so that we won't be able to purify it ourselves? Is that what's going on? There's still a lot of uh, more work to do as well. The scientists are keen to understand how humidity levels affect the reactions, for example, um, and how more and more people inside rooms uh, might change the picture. So further, there is a possibility that oxidation fields humans produce might um, even affect our perception perception of odor. Uh, we need to think, rethink uh, indoor chemistry on occupied spaces because the oxidation field we create will transform many of the chemicals in our immediate vicinity, uh, says atmospheric chemist John Nathan Williams from the Max Planck Institute of uh, Chemistry in Germany. Um, the research has been published on a science magazine. So it's still in research and it's not exactly what I thought. Man, I'm kind of pissed because <laughs> I did post on Instagram like I thought it was really cool how we're able to like change the air around us, which is true apparently according to science, but it's not based by our mood. We're not like walking mood rings. I'm kind of mad. <laughs> okay, let's just go to the next one. Okay, this one is about Meghan Markle, so we're gonna read this article real quick. Um, I will say that um, ever since Harry and Meghan decided to get married, um, it's been kind of awkward. Um, I've seen a body language video on YouTube about how um, he reacts to her, like he doesn't want to be touched by her and everything. So. We're just gonna get into her behavior because apparently she really likes the spotlight and um, she just wants attention. So Meghan Markle's awkward exchange with royal aides over flowers is caught on video. It was a floral fumble. Meghan Markle was caught in an awkward moment involving a bouquet of flowers while mourning the loss of Queen Elizabeth II alongside her husband, Prince Harry, as well as Prince William and Kate Middleton. Um, in a video captured by a mourner outside Windsor Castle on Saturday, Markle was uh, seen holding a bouquet when a royal aide approached her to ask whether she could take the flowers off, or he could take the flowers off her hands. Megan appeared to decline the offer and told the aide she was going to put them on, put them down herself before turning back to the crowd with a bundle, with the bundle still in her arms. What? Um, but moments later, another aide walked up to take the flowers uh, that Harry got from a member of the public and then reached for Mark. Uh, bouquet and said or two, okay, whatever. The Suits um, alum seemed to resist at first but after the aide appeared to explain the situation, Markle obliged and handed over the floral arrangement. Um, the big guns had to step in when Mark or Megan refused um, to go to let go of the flowers. Um, the first aide uh, tried to take 
from her as she herself wanted to walk them over to the other tributes. A fan account tweeted, okay. Um, let's see, uh, several Twitter users uh, surmised that Markle wanted to hold onto the flowers and place them at the fence uh, for photo op purposes. I would not um, deny that, to be honest. Um, I don't know much about her behavior. Uh, sh she isn't like the first person that um, I've kind of looked over within like news things because then it just ends up becoming like celebrity obsession for some people and I don't want to be like a celebrity tabloid po podcast. But uh, I guess she wanted for the optics but it squashed by people who know exactly what she's trying to achieve. One uh, viewer tweeted adding, I'm thinking uh, so she gets the money shot and she, when she places the flowers down on the floral tributes. Okay, so basically she just wanted attention, just, you know, that that's usually uh, what is said about her behavior, that's how she operates. Um, she probably wanted to be captured and filmed when she walks alone um, and put the flowers there and put them and to put in action. Okay. Um, actually, if you think about it, she really is a narcissist, always trying to make everything about her and every occasion. Glad she was stopped. Okay. She was absolutely classless, as simple as that. Other Twitter users, however, gave Markle the benefit of the doubt, saying that she was just trying to mourn the queen in peace. Um, can't believe the Megan bashing was starting already. It's the first time she's experienced this and was doing her best to probably, um, as she probably promised to lay the flowers down herself. And that's what she was going to do till, um, Harry and it's okay, whatever. I don't, this, um, these paragraphs are kind of jumbled and it's weird. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, she did get the money shot. Look at that. Look at that. Um, she, she's got it. So I'm guessing she got what she wanted, but I, I can't assume her behavior just because I haven't really looked into it. Maybe later I will. But, um, no, everybody doesn't like Meghan Markle because of the, the attention seeking that she likes to get. Um, she probably didn't understand that uh, the flowers are taken off of them for safety purposes. After all, um, there could have been a small explosive device, nerve gas, poisonous insect, any number of things concealed in them. A second fan explained of Royal um, protocol. Isn't, um, another, I'm not sure, but isn't another type of royal protocol is to make sure that the royal family is briefed on certain safety situations. So if she wasn't informed, that's on the people that were supposed to brief her. And if she, um, does, if she did know, then she really did just want to, you know, to have attention. Someone said, oh my god, stop it, leave this poor woman all alone, um, take a breath, this will pay out as it will play out. I cannot fucking read. <laughs> Be glad the whole world isn't weighing on every move you make enough already. One more wrote. Markle, 41, and Harry, 37, um, joined William and Middleton, both 40, to lay flowers outside the Windsor Castle to pay tribute to the late monarch. The outing marked the first time the Duke and Duchess of Sussex appeared in public with the newly crowned Prince and Princess of Wales since the Commonwealth Day in March 2020. Okay, so they haven't really been part of social interaction. And I, I think I know why, just because I know that Kate Middleton has never been really liked by the Queen. Um, she's kind of been kind of like how you know, Princess Diana was, and how she kind of objected towards certain things. Because um, even her wardrobe, like, she's not supposed to 
wear certain things, but Kate Middleton ended up doing it anyways. So I understand why um, they probably decided to stay away from the public eye because, you know, she was disobedient and she just didn't, she doesn't want everybody to demonize her, which is fine. A royal source told uh, Page Six that William extended the infant. <sighs> Oh my god, that William extended the invitation. Oh my, why is that such a hard word to say right now? Extended the invitation to the estranged brother and sister-in-law, adding, we are very grateful, both sides putting all things aside for the queen. Harry rushed to uh, be by the queen's side last Thursday morning when Buckingham Palace announced that her health was rapidly declining, but... He arrived after his grandmother's death and without his wife, who reportedly feared she would be she would not be warmly welcomed. Um, Harry released a sentimental statement Monday on losing the monarch. Granny, while this uh, final parting brings us to great sadness, I am forever grateful for all of our first meetings. Um, for uh, from my earliest childhood memories to you or with you. Uh, to meeting you for the first time as my commander-in-chief to the first moment you met my darling wife and hugged uh, you, your beloved great-grandchildren, um, he said. Harry added, I cherish these times I shared with you and the many other uh, special moments in between. You are already sorely missed. Markle has yet to release a statement, though the pair mourned uh, the Queen's loss together by having the website of the Archwell organization go dark. Okay, that's it. That's it for that, I think. Okay, I found some really weird news, like the weird things that people do, um, there are a few of them that I'm going to read. Because the first one's very, like, weird, but it's short. So it says, rabies alert issued for a raccoon taken into North Dakota bar. Um, Matic, North uh, Dakota, a woman walked into a North Dakota bar carrying a raccoon, uh, leading health officials... <laughs> Uh, to warn those who had contact with the animal uh, about possible rabies exposure. Bartender Cindy Smith said she was serving drinks at the Matic Bar last week when a local resident brought in the animal during happy hour. Why? <laughs> oh my god. Was she just going on a bar crawl so she just found a raccoon in a dumpster and was like, hey, let's go. You're my drinking buddy. Another uh, was in September 8th this year, a um, Chinese man trapped aloft in a hydrogen balloon for two days. Chinese state uh, media say a man has been found safe after uh, he spent two days aloft in a hydrogen balloon, traveling about 320 kilometers, 200 miles, after it uh, came became unearthed and flew away while he was using it to harvest pine nuts from a tree. Is that usually how they harvest pine nuts though? You didn't have a ladder? I'm glad he's okay though. Uh, Stone Age skeleton missing foot may show oldest amputation. New York. Okay. Uh, the three, the 31 a thousand year old skeleton of a young adult found in a cave in Indonesia um, that is missing his left foot and part of um, its left leg revealed the oldest known evidence of an amputation according to the new study. Or maybe I'll just, um, you know, lost it? Maybe somebody stole the foot for some reason? I don't know. I don't know. Swiss retailer rolls out coffee balls to replace capsules. Uh, I didn't know you can get pills with coffee in, in them. What the fuck? 
Swiss retailer Milgross said Tuesday that it is launching a um, coffee-making system designed to replace capsules that produce thousands and tons of waste worldwide each year. The um, cooperative said that the spherical capsules, described as coffee balls, um, are fully um, compostable, unlike the plastic aluminum containers uh, Nestle under the brand Nespresso 36 years ago. Yeah, so um, basically um, the aluminum containers popularized by its rival is Nestle. So 36 years ago. So he's just, I don't know, kind of making a... C that one was, I, I don't even know. How do I even explain that one? Okay, I think this one takes the cake. Abuya, Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria seizes donkey penises to be smuggled to Hong Kong. Nigerian officials have seized thousands of donkey penises that were about to be exported to Hong Kong, an official said on Thursday. Sacks of the donkey male genitals were seized at the international airport in Lagos, Nigeria's largest city of Sambo, Dangalaman. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Danga. La mid. La. Danga la dima. I think that's how you say it. The uh, Nigeria Customs Service co area commander told reporters. Why did they need that many penises from donkeys? I need to know. This was on September 8th, people. A shipment of 7,000 donkey penises were to be smuggled to Hong Kong and it was seized last week at Lagos Airport after the suspicious smell had attracted the attention of airport officers. I need to know why they needed the donkey penises anyway. Why? Oh my god, okay, donkey penises, known for their distinctive eyes are consumed in China as an alleged aphrodisiac. The market remains shrouded in obscurity, however. <laughs> the shipment was um, declared as bull genitals, but the officers were um, but the officers were, according to Danga Ladima, uh, puzzled by the strong odor and proceeded with further um, inspection of the cargo. Uh, other donkey parts, notably skin, in enjoy popularity in uh, Ijiao, uh traditional Chinese remedies, which is um, supposed to slow down aging. Jesus Christ! To be responsible for the killing, estimated to be responsible for the killing of 48, or no, 4.8 million donkeys every year. The surging demand for donkey parts has put the species' populations around the world under threat. I'm sorry! That many- 7,000 donkey dicks were seized, and all of those donkeys died, all because Though the people in China, like certain people in China, couldn't get an erection, is that what's going on? I don't mean to sound terrible, but that's 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 the condensed version in my mind. Like the frick? In Nigeria, donkey slaughter and exportation were banned in 2019 in an effort to protect the rapidly falling donkey population, but the measure does not seem to be particularly efficient. In Nigeria, um. In July for this year, for example, Nigeria seized a shipment of 2,820 donkey skins uh, just a month after seizing the uh, 3,712 skins. And meanwhile, donkey traders have, crit have criticized the ban inefficient and harmful to the economy. Cows of which we slaughter were 50,000 in daily basis for meat. Uh, have not gone into extinction, we should encourage breeding and ranching. 
Um, African countries have taken different approaches to the regulation of the donkey trade. Tanzania, South Sudan, Uganda, Sen Senegal, um, Botswana, Sudan, Nigeria, and Ethiopia ban donkey slaughter or exports, but elsewhere on the continent, the business seems to continue unhindered. The poor donkeys! Good God! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> I had to reread this. I'm going to reread it just because, um, for some reason, it didn't, um, <laughs> it didn't record. So, this next one a shipment of 7,000 donkey penises were to be smuggled to Hong Kong was seized last week at Lagos a Airport. Yeehaw. Stop. <laughs> After a suspicious smell attracted the attention of export officers. <laughs> so... Huh? Excuse me, my husband is distracting me. <coughs> yeah. Terrence. Oh my god, okay. Um, similar seizures were uh, exceptionally rare. It is the first time we are seizing this type of item, said Customs Area Controller Sambo uh, Dang... Galadima. Alright. So, donkey penises are known for their distinctive size <laughs> and are consumed in China as an alleged aphrodisiac. An, uh, an alleged aphrodisiac, babe. You have anything to say? You have everything else to say when I don't ask you. I would say that, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if, if there was a lot of pansexuals out there <gasps> that are like a woman, uh, I, 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 I had some, some, some stuff went through my head, man. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> never mind. I don't even want to get into the story of why he even said that. All right. Um, the market remains shrouded in obscurity, however. Okay. So, the shipment was declared as bull genitals, but the officers were according uh, to Dangaladima, uh, puzzled. They were puzzled by its strong odor and proceeded to further in to further the invest Why can't I jump? To further the investigation of the cargo. Other donkey parts, notably skin, enjoy uh, popularity in Ayo, um, a traditional Chinese remedy, uh, which is um, supposed to slow down aging. Um, estimated to be responsible for the killing of 4.8 million donkeys every year, the uh, surging demand for donkey parts um, has put the species populations around the world at threat. I knock something over. So Africa, where donkeys are frequently in um, agriculture and transport, has taken a particularly severe blow. Nigeria, donkey slaughter and exportation were banned in 2019 in an effort to protect a rapidly falling donkey population, but the measure does not seem to be particularly efficient. In July, the this year, for example, Nigeria seized shipment of 2,820 donkey skins just a month after seizing 3,712 donkey skins. All right. Uh, meanwhile, donkey traders have criticized the ban as inefficient and harmful to the economy. Cows, of which we slaughter more than 50,000 in on a daily basis for meat, have not gone into extinction. We should encourage breeding and ranching. Um, African countries have different approaches to the regulation and of the donkey trade. Um, Tanzania, South Sudan, Uganda, Senegal, um, Senegal, sorry, uh, Botswana, Sudan, Nigeria, and Ethiopia ban donkey slaughter or 
their exports, but elsewhere on the continent the business seems to be unhindered. Okay, so today in world news we have Japan. Thank you so much Japan for listening. I appreciate you and sending you a lot of love with this uh, little uh, news segment. So all you Demon Slayer um, anime fans will appreciate this. Um, Demon Slayer is in the sky with new Kimetsu and Yaiba anime themed uh, airliner from ANA. So um, by botched those characters' names. Sorry, I don't watch it. <laughs> um, Tokyo, being in Japan's uh, Taisho area, means that the cast of Demon Slayer, Kometsu, well, Kometsu and Yaiba, um, don't get to experience commercial air travel within the series, but the modern-day popularity of the phenomenally popular anime manga is giving the Demon Slayer core um, the community um, to fly in the real world all Nippon um, Airways uh, airplane literally okay so it's a demon slayer like themed plane which is kind of cool um, ANA has just unveiled uh, the latest tie up with demon slayer um, a Boeing 777 uh, 200ER uh, featuring massive portraits of three of the series' most popular swordsmen um, up front. Either side of the aircraft has an illustration of the leading man, Tanjiro, with a flame, or with flame, Haishia uh, Rengoku, um, behind him in the right side of the plane's uh, fuse ledge and sound, Tashira. Uh, Tengen on the left. Okay. In addition to the exterior graphics, the cast will be uh, seen on special uh, headrest covers, and the series aesthetics will be represented in special flight staff aprons. That's cute. That's adorable. Passengers will hear um, special onboard announcements from Taijiro, Artanjiro, Rengoku, and Tenjin, and the in flight video entertainment options include Demon Slayer, Kimetsu, and Yaiba, um, the movie um, Mugen Train? I don't know. Um, the Entertainment District Arc um, episodes of the anime TV series. Um, ANA will also be offering exclusive merchandise um, through the flight shopping service and as luggage tags and drink bottles. That's cool. Why can't why can't like America be as cool as Japan? Man, I, um, the Demon Slayer Jet 3 um, as it's officially called will have its first flight on October 2nd with Tokyo's um, Haneda Airport, uh, serving as both the departure and arrival point for a 90-minute sightseeing flight. Then, starting October 3rd, it will follow the below schedule of six flights um, a day. Okay. That schedule continues through October 16th, after which the Demon Slayer plane will be flying other currently undisclosed domestic routes. I like that. So, anyways, again, thank you Japan for listening. I appreciate you more than you can even know. And um, I will see you guys in the trenches next time. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye!